If you remember from our disassembly video here, we took this uh, pop can lid and we made a nice little holder for us. A little trick when you take this out. Guys, I want you to understand this. Everybody in here that has one of these Suzuki style ones, all our pieces are there. So when you think about this, let's not lose them. So if you go to take something out that's under spring pressure, would you agree with me that you have to be prepared? So I'm gonna just take my 90 degree pick here and I'm gonna hook under a, a, a gear here, or a tooth, I'm sorry. And then once I get this up a little bit, I'm going to grab right here and right here is under spring pressure. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pinch that, okay? Now this is fully assembled. I think in our other video I spent some time of how to uh, assemble and disassemble this. So if you guys need help in the lab, I'll, I'll definitely show you. What this is going to do is this is going to be engaged in here. And when we grab, when we shift the transmission with the use of the, the shifter, so we have our, our foot shifter over here, we're going to upshift or downshift and tell the transmission what we want to do. We want to upshift or we want to downshift, okay? So you can see here, there is an alignment piece to this. And what you do here is you want these teeth to be in the middle. I don't want to, I don't want to do this because then when I go to upshift or downshift at some point in time, I'm not grabbing all the teeth. Does that make sense? Yeah, we'll go in gear. Yeah, or it might just go one time. You might get that one turn out of it. So when I fully assemble this, you're going to see that I just have a, a real equal amount of teeth. Pretty simple. And did you see how that spring internally went around that pin in there? And if you guys remember from uh, disassembly and assembly, as I rotate this up and down, so now I actually shifted it here. I didn't get full travel. Did you hear how I got full travel that time? And then when it drops back down, it will it will recenter itself. And I, why did I have to move all this around? Why? Because I'm not level. I'm not level. Do you see how my engine's kind of tipped over here? And so that it, it's not it's not constant mesh turning under a thousand RPM to where everything wants to roll together nice. So if I hold the counter shaft sprocket, you can see here I'm actually in a selected gear right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push this back down. This is hard to actually operate by hand. It's easier for me to go ahead and pull this out and then do the proper assembly. But what I wanted you to see is how this rotates around, you know, and it only ever spins about this much, an upshift and a downshift. But when I go the other direction, this finger will take the drum that way. Or if I want to go this way, I'll get the finger right here. You can see it on that side. It goes that way and then it's going to rotate the drum and then the opposite one here is going to rotate the drum that direction. So it's really a simple design, right? right? And then when I go the other way, what you'll notice is that the, the other one will compress the spring and that's what allows it to go inside itself and then when it, it gets to its resting place, it snaps back out. So one is rolling into itself, the other one's grabbing the drum and pulling it around. Here's where it gets to be hard, okay? This is the cumbersome, this is the part where stuff is gonna drop and, and you might struggle a little bit, and that is this plate. If you guys remember here, this, uh, this only has one way it likes to fit on here. The manual does not give you an exact you know, way or position, but do you see how I keep protecting the springs? Uh -huh. I don't want those to drop around. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for I'm going to set this on here and, and get in place because it only goes one way. Do you see how this way it can't sit on there? My holes won't line up. So I know that I want to land something like this. And would you agree with me? I want to land like this so that I can engage into that shift. So since I know my, my pattern here, I'm going to come from underneath here. I'm going to try and find that sweet spot. There we go. Okay, so here, here's the part two, is I'm really being intentional to squeeze those springs because I don't want to drop that in there. Once I'm in here, I've got all the room in the world to work with. Does that make sense? 
but it, it's, I mean, if you struggle with this and you're dropping it, and you gotta remember, you took this apart a long time ago, it's not that uncommon. But let, let, for, let's, uh, let's do a check for understanding. Did you see me put the part roughly up here in its orientation before I tried to assemble it? Yeah. Yeah. You saw me do that. You saw me make sure and figure out which holes I'm actually going into yep. to prevent those problems. Now let's talk about actual installation of this. What, what are these two support screws getting on, on themselves? Okay. Absolutely, guys. I don't know of a, a bike out there that is not going to uh, um, want to have Loctite on these screws because if they come loose, it is going to be um, undesirable, right? So this is a little cumbersome. You'd see here one has a, basically a, a, a machined aluminum tab on here. And then what do we have to do to the threads? Clean them. What size screwdrivers? Every one of these in the world. Number three. It's a big dog. Okay, this is a big old fat one. If we use uh, the wrong one here, we'll just strip these off. Now, surprisingly, this is a 1995. Look at the condition of those screws. Yeah, it's because we replaced them. They were so stripped. <laughs> um, this, uh, this is common. So as you're doing your parts list, as you're trying to figure things out. Now, the... Uh, there could be a torque spec in the manual for that, okay? So this would be like the shift cam support plate or something like that, but it's probably unlikely. Those are a six by one. I'm gonna show you how I tighten those. You guys have seen this all before. I'm gonna tap this in, right? Yep. Okay, and then I wanna preload the tool, and then the way I tighten this, and see how I get that good turn out of that? Okay, my screws are brand new and they fit well, so I didn't have to beat this in there. It was really just for demonstration purposes. Those will be Loctite done, and life is going to be good for me. Okay, so uh, as I go to install this, one thing I said to check for is to see if there's any scarring on this pin. Do you guys remember why? And then on the spring, it, ooh, look at that. What needs replaced here? Spring. Okay. That would be enough, that little shiny spot there would be enough to cause some grief in the shifting. I want to look forward, I want to look through this a little bit deeper. If I have wear here, what do I know about the pin? Probably it's probably got wear too. Now that is, see if that's the upshift or the downshift one. That mark is from, from downshifting. So you ever have, you ever have uh, that customer, maybe you got a buddy where they go to take off on their motorcycle and let's say when the motor died it was in second or third gear, they, they go to get ready to take off on their bike and they're going and they're jumping on their shifter, that's that mark right there. I could tell because it's a downshift mark. Do you get what I'm saying? What, what should you do if a transmission is stuck a gear? The harder you step on that shift lever, is that going to help? Well, no clutch all the way in. No, well, clutch can be it. It's the constant mesh of the transmission. Clutch won't help you at all. What? There, Michael, you could tell you've got some experience there. You do not jump and down on the shifter. You leave it in gear, maybe apply a little bit of foot pressure and rock the bike back and forth, and then uh, as you're applying foot pressure, tap it. Just tap, 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 and you won't hurt these parts. But that's what our customer's doing, is they're jumping up and down. Now, if the mark was on the other side, what did I say is the common cause? A wreck. A left-sided crash of the motorcycle will jam this the other direction because of the impact on the ground, and that's the kind of wear that you want to look for. Make sense? I'm going to finish off with my clutch. And uh, you guys, of course, uh, would be lots of assembly lube. Those three motors out there that are meant to be runners, we want to do that. And uh, let's take a look here at the, the clutch part of this.